for this. Thank God for the teachers and workers who work with the children and the young people. They're the future of tomorrow. And we're so glad you're here today. We thank for the parents, the grandparents, the mothers, the dads that are able to come. Today, I will start off like we do with the every service. I start off with a verse of scripture. Uh, this is good and accept the sign of God our Savior who love all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There is but one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. The word ransom means a price was paid. And the price that was paid was the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. He who came from heaven down to this earth and took your sin, my sin, the sin of the world upon himself and went to Calvary. There he died and shed his blood. On the third day he rose again. That's where salvation is. It's not in religion, not in water baptism. It's in a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for that. What we've done, we've compiled some scriptures looking at them and put them together. And we ask the question, how rich are you? And if you do not have one of the outlines, we got a, a sheet of paper back there that has these verses that you might see the documentation. How rich are you? They're right back there in the back and you wanna be sure and take one of these because uh, it gives the validation that you can compare the word of God with the word of God and see these things are true. How rich are you? Now Webster defines the word rich, possessing, are controlling great wealth. Riches had to do with wealth, treasure, things of value and worth. It doesn't always have to mean material things, the gold, like gold and silver and precious stone, land, houses, livestock, valuable possessions and so forth. It could mean spiritual and social blessings. Let us consider what the Bible says about riches. The context of each verse will help explain the riches that are involved. The first place we look at is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Romans 10, 9 through 17, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek or the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Over in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we're dead in sins, hath he quickened or made us alive together with Christ. For by grace are you saved, hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Now Ephesians chapter 1, Verses 3 through 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according to has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before, before Him in love, having predetermined us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace, we have redemption because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. Ephesians chapter 3. 
verses 1 through 12, verse 7 and 8. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace given to me, effectual working of power. Unto him am I less the least of all the saints, and this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. Ephesians 3, 1 through 12. Riches and God's glory. There's a lot of verses here about riches and God's glory. Romans 9, 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Ephesians 1, 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. Ephesians 3.16 that, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. As a child of God, you have an outward man, the flesh part of us, but you have the inward man, the new man created after Christ Jesus. Colossians 1.27 To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of his mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory. We come down to the next section. The children of God are rich because they are heirs of God and John heirs with Christ. Now think about that. We who are saved we have an inheritance. We're heirs of God and John heirs with Christ. Everything that Christ has is ours. Isn't that wonderful? We're riches because of Christ. The children of God are rich because of heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Because our internal, our eternal inheritance in Christ are all the blessings of heaven and earth are ours in Him. Second Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now all of us have need. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Everybody has needs. If you don't have needs, stick around. They'll come. We need uh, the healing hand of God. We need His mercy and grace every day. Every day. Riches and glory by Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world. There's a lot of people who have riches more than others. Charge them that are rich in this world that you be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. It's the living God who richly gives us all things to enjoy. To God be the glory. Praise His holy name. God wants His children to know about the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. Ephesians 1.10 Whom also obtained the inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him, work of all things after the counsel of his will. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you know may what is the hope of his calling and the riches of glory of the inheritance and in his saints. Hebrews chapter nine is a very interesting verse. But Christ being come a high priest of the good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that in the same, not to this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered into once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Verse 13, or if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of heifers sprinkled unclean, sanctify appearing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, 
purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We've been redeemed by the grace of God. We're kept by the power of God, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he in an old holy place to re eternal redemption. The Bible says in verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, but serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression, that were made testament, that which called great might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, verse three through five. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten, he's birthed us, you birth. You must be born again, begotten us again to a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. An inheritance, it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, it fadeth not away, it's reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. On the back side, look at the back side just for a moment. On the back side, it says, children of God are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Romans 8, 1, 14 through 18. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. The Spirit also beareth witness for thy spirit, that we are the children of God, and the children then heirs, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Look at the next verse, Galatians chapter 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem us that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are sons of God, he have sent the Spirit of God into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Riches, dangers, and caution verses. We have the parable of the rich fool. Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 12 just for a moment. Turn to Luke chapter 12 in your Bible. In Luke chapter 12, look at verses 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room wherefore to restore my fruits? He said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to them, Thou fool. He says, You're a fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. And who shall these things be which thou hast provided? Isn't it amazing? We're able to accumulate things, but one day death will come just like this man. He says, You fool. This day thy soul shall be required of thee. So is it so is he that layeth up treasure for himself is not rich toward God. And he said unto the disciples, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life. What shall we eat? 
neither for the body. What shall we put on? This life is more than raiment, and the body is more than, than uh, raiment. Consider the ravens of the, for they neither sow nor reap. Neither have they storehouses nor barns, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? Verse 25. And which of you, taking thought, can add a statue or cubit? If you'd have been not able to do that, which is least, why take you thought of the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. Verse 27. They toil not, they spin not. Did I say unto you that Solomon, all his glory, was not arrayed like one of them? Look at verse 28. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more shall it clothe you, O you little faith? And seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink and neither what you be of doubtful mind. For all these things do the Gentile nations seek. Your Father knoweth that you have need of these. God knows our needs. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Verse 34. And where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, where is our treasure today? Is it in the houses, bonds, things we've saved? These are temporal value things. They'll be taken away in a moment just like that, and they're gone. We need to think about the eternal value. Keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Look at the eternal value things. Put in Christ first, your labor. Labor in the Lord. You're not, we know that we labor not in vain. Our labor is not in vain in Christ. God will reward us in this life and the life to come by you serving him giving unto him, doing unto him. We thank God for that. Thank God for these promises. We have this here man, the rich man in Luke chapter 12, but there's also another man in Luke chapter 18. You're in 12, look at Luke chapter 18. Go to 18 just for a moment. Luke chapter 18. If we go to Luke chapter 18, we find that uh, there's a, another man, a rich young ruler. Look at verse 18. Chapter 18, verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What have I got to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? None good but save God. Verse 20. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. He said, All these things have I kept from thy youth up. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Yet you lack us one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. Or he, had very, he was a very rich man. You see, he was more concerned about his riches than serving God. And when Jesus saw that, he was very sorrowful. He, he says, how hardly shall they that are rich enter into the kingdom of God? For it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. People get their eyes on riches for as soon as they get hold of them. And they heard that he said, who then can be saved? He said, these things which are impossible with man are possible with God. Then Peter said, lo, we've left everything and follow you. Verse 29, he said, verily I say unto you, there is not no man that hath left house, parents, brother, or wife, or children for the kingdom of God, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and the world to come everlasting life. God honors those who honor him and love him and serve him. So we go back and look at a few other things here concerning these things in your outline. 
we find that, that some people over in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6 through 12, for godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment, for we brought nothing into this world. It is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich shall fall into temptation and snare, and to foolish and many lustful hurts, which, would, which drown men in, in, in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. That's a lot of evil. The, the love of money is the root of all of you. We have a lot of people uh, standing behind the pulpit, uh, preachers and teachers all over the world. And they're preaching and saying, me, send me your seed money. I'll send you this, I'll send you that. They, they try to make a profit off of God and his word. Or the love of money is the root of all, the root of all which while some covet after it, they bared the, from the faith and pierced him through himself through with many sorrows. But thou, O man, flee, flee these things. Fall after righteousness, godliness, and faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I think this is interesting. Next point of emphasis. Some people think they are rich, but they're poor. Some people think they're rich. Over in Revelation chapter 3, 15 through 19. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art neither cold or hot, you're lukewarm. You're not hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods. I have need of nothing. And knowest not thou art wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, you're naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold find the fire, that thou may be rich. True riches come from God, from God's word in Christ. He says this, that, And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness may not appear. And on thine eyes of thy sad, thou mayest see. As men as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Greater riches, the right choice. In Hebrews chapter 11, we have a man that made the right choice. I'm going to read this. Uh, it's all about making choices, and there's consequences because of choices we make. And over in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months and his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment by faith moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter choosing here's a choice he made he says i'd rather be he says choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of christ greater riches than the treasures of Eden. He says the greater riches are found in Christ and think than the, all that, that Egypt and being a, the, the, a king's son could offer. Greater riches come from Almighty God through Christ. He says in verse 26, his statement the approach of Christ, greater riches than treasures of Egypt, for I had respect unto the recompense of reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing you, him who was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood that destroyed the firstborn uh, should be for, destroyed the firstborn should be touched them. By faith he passed through the Red Sea by land. When the Egyptians began to fall after him, they were drowned. We find that God has given us so many blessings. How rich are you? If you're in Christ, you have the greater riches, the true riches. But if we as Christians begin to get our eyes on things and they begin to possess us, then we're the losers. We lose those blessings and those rich blessings that God wants us to have. There's many, many verses here. How rich are you? And the riches that we've talked about here. And the greater riches when people like Moses makes a good choice. Right now we're going to...
come back to the video people who are watching on video you might ask yourself this question if I died right now and my heart stopped beating would I go to heaven if or would you die and go to hell you don't want to go there those who die without the Lord Jesus Christ be absent from the body to be in a place of, of torment a place of burning and later on be cast in the lake of fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels but if you don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ to receive him as your Savior you say that I'm sincere but without Christ you may have sincerity but that will not save you without Christ you say but I'm religious a lot of religious people die a lot of religious people are going to die and go to hell because they are religious but they're religiously lost you want to make sure you know, go back to the time and the place when you know that you know you said Lord Jesus come into my heart and save me can you go back to that time and place where you know you did that if not you can do it today right now and we say to those people who are watching video you want to make sure you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you pray this simply prayer Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on that cross and shed your blood. I know the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm not trusting religion. I'm trusting Jesus, who died and shed his blood on the third day he rose again. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Our Father, our prayer is that those who have asked Christ to be their Savior today will find a good Bible-believing church, get into the Word of God, they'll begin to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. And Father, may you help us who know Christ as Savior to go forth from here to be the ambassadors you'd have us to be, the witnesses you'd have us to be. Help us, Lord, to be faithful is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.